Hello all, this is MJ and I am going to tell you a joke. This is for those of you who missed the variety show or for those of you who loved my joke at the variety show so much you decided to watch again and listen to it for the second time. And it may just be completely different than the way I tell it at the variety show. That's the beauty of these kinds of jokes. Anyway, so once upon a time, there's this guy. His name... His name was Edward. His name was Edward. I call, I'll call him Eddie. Eddie was a nice guy. He didn't do so well in school, though. Once he graduated high school, he just kind of fell off the radar. And he went on to, you know, keep to himself. He got a job at a mechanic shop. But he just, he was so fascinated with engines, man, that, like, he started just, he gained his employer's trust and he started taking engines apart at night and putting them back together. And like, it was just his favorite thing in the world. And of course, nobody really, like, he didn't have any friends because he spent most of his time, you know, taking cars apart. But, you know, he, it was cool, you know. And his employer was just so impressed with him, he just said, Bro, I mean, you should go into bigger and better things. So the guy calls a trucking company and says, Do you need, like, a really good mechanic to be your, to be your mechanic for your trucking company that you have here? And the guy was like, Well, yeah, I do, but, um, I don't. You know, I don't have an opening for a mechanic right now, so I guess I don't... Like, we could always use another good mechanic, but we don't technically have an opening. We always, like, love for our drivers to have mechanic skills, though. I could get him a job as a driver. So, um, Eddie's current boss talked with Eddie and said, If you are a driver for a year then they can consider you as a mechanic. And he's like, well, okay, I'll try it. So he left his humble boss's apartment. Um, he had invited him over for dinner. And after dinner, he left his boss's apartment and went to Fort Worth, Texas, where the trucking company was. That's where the trucking company was. And he began to work there and it was fantastic he loved it he got to keep to himself he didn't really like i said he wasn't much of a people person he just really like it liked engines so um he just drove around in a truck all day it was great and when something happened to his truck he like didn't even have to bring it in he'd just fix it because he was that good so one day, like, it was, like, almost on the year mark. He had almost been working for them for, re for a year. So he, like, went up and was driving along. And it was, like, middle California. So, like, I don't know, California geography. But, like, that, that kind of area. And... He, all of a sudden, it's like 2 or 3 in the morning, and he needs to be somewhere in the next morning. Not too early, but he liked to get places, he liked to get where he was going first, and then, like, find a Walmart near there and just park and sleep. Um, so anyway, he was driving along on a back road, because he heard it was faster on that back road, and... He just, it didn't work out. His truck broke down. And he was like, it, pretty much the back road was in the sticks. Pretty much in the middle of the woods. So he was just like, okay, well, I'm going to lock up the truck. I'm going to park it on the side of the road. I'm going to call my manager. I'm going to tell him that I can't fix it. It's like 3 o'clock in the morning and I can't even see. And I'm really tired. And there was a hotel 
a motel that was like spitting distance from where he was and so he locked his car called his manager everything was okay um he walked down to the motel and he went in and he said okay bro my truck broke down a couple of miles back could like do you have a room for the night and they said yeah sure 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 so he paid him the money and he went to the room and they said only one rule this is our last room and we don't usually give it out but you're in a bind so we will but um the big deal is you can't go into the closet you can't do that so the guy's like all right i won't go in the closet but what do you think the guy really wants to do the guy really wants to go in the closet so eddie lays down in the bed and he snuggles up gets all comfy and just tries to go to sleep and for the life of him he just can't and so he finally goes over creeps over to the closet and he opens the door and like runs away and then he looks in he like realizes that no monster has come out of the closet yet so he like crawls he like army crawls back over and he like go peeks around the door and there's nothing in there so he goes in the closet and there's like a false wall so he like goes through the false wall or I don't how do, how do you get past false walls it was like a little divider thing so he just like spread the divider thing and he went in and there's a hallway it was like and at the end of the hallway was a door and it had a sign on it but he couldn't read it so he had to get closer and he got closer he read it said don't open this door he's like bruh I've already gone into the closet nothing's happened it'll be fine so he opens the door and all of a sudden there's this really steep staircase like that's that's yeah straight up straight up like 30 degree angle so he's like okay and on the back of the door there's a sign that says don't go down these stairs he's like seriously what could happen so he goes down the stairs toward the end of the stairs it's like go back up the stairs now you still have time and so he's like no I'm not going to he gets to the bottom of the stairs and it starts getting really slippery and before he knows it BAM he doesn't well he slips but he doesn't actually hit anything he like slips and falls but he's so close to the bottom that he like fell on what he thought was the floor but it opened up into a portal there was a freaking portal to another dimension at the bottom of these stairs and so he's like falling through space and time and he's like wibbly wobbly those of you who don't get that you're not cool well anyway he gets to the bottom and he finds himself in a desert a desert yes so the first thing he sees in the desert other than like all the sand and the sun blaring down on him is like this huge like stick with a sign attached to the stick that says bruh go back now don't cross this desert and so of course he crosses the desert and he finally it takes him like three hours to get through this desert and he's just like I have to figure out why they won't let me why they say don't go in the closet As this has been fine so far I'm a little thirsty but it's been fine so far so at the edge of the desert there's like this forest and there are like signs nailed to trees everywhere that are like don't go in don't go in don't you dare go in don't go into this forest and he's like are you serious bro I'm totally going into this forest so he goes into the forest and there's like this path so he leads he goes on it 
and he like almost runs into several trees. It takes him like a good 30 minutes to get to like the heart of the forest. No sound, nowhere, you can barely see the sun. Thick, thick jungle. And he gets out his phone and turns on the flashlight and there in front of him is a statue of a monkey. And he's like, okay. And he looks around at the trees and they are all like carved into the tree. It says, do not, whatever you do, touch the monkey. Do not touch the monkey. So what does he do? Of course, everyone, he touches the monkey. The monkey comes to life. It starts even though that's more like a deranged parrot. I don't make monkey noises. Anyway, um, it starts like scratching its arms and then it looks and it's like wow that's a lot closer to the camera than I initiated. Okay anyway, it's like screaming and pointing at the guy and it takes off running and so Eddie is like just like, oh my god a monkey's chasing me I gotta go back I gotta go I gotta go this is what horizontal running looks like apparently and so he's running and running and running and running and the guy's let and the monkey's still chasing him and he gets out of the forest finally and he goes all the way through the desert a lot faster than he initially did and the monkey's still chasing him and he like jumps up trying to get up through the portal and all of a sudden he hears and that is the portal opening and the portal sucks him up and he's like I'm good I'm good and all of a sudden he hears the monkey on the other side of the portal and the monkey sound is getting closer so he's like oh my gosh I can't even relax while I'm going wibbly wobbly through space and time this sucks so he gets back to the stairs and he runs up them as fast as he can and he gets to the other uh, he gets to the other side of the steep staircase and he shuts the door and puts like a chair up against it and he can still hear the monkey coming and so he runs through the hallway out of the door and this time it's morning and it's time for him to pay his dues anyway so he like he already paid his money so he went and checked out really fast and um, he ran back to his truck and he's like I think I'm finally good he looked at his truck I guess his truck was just tired because um, it nothing was wrong with it it started up just fine maybe it like it just got hot and it needed some rest but um, anyway he went on and finally like he's like oh it's like a mile down the road and he's like okay fine he's driving along it's like okay and all of a sudden he hears ah, 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 and it's like banging on the roof and he looks out and that is the sound of the monkey from the behind the portal from up the stairs everything is just like it's banging on his roof it breaks the window it comes in the cab of his truck and he's just like Please don't hurt me. And the monkey goes, Tag, you're it. 